All right. Um. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Um. Jesus. All of this is going out there. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try not to edit this. this too, oh. I'm going to try not to edit this too much. I don't want to edit this too much. Um, good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Natasha. And over the course of the next, what, 30 seconds, if I'm lucky, maybe a minute, I'm going to be selling myself to you. Uh, you know, see if I'm worth your time. See if I'm worth your attention. And see if this, however long it ends up being, little uh, art uh, sketchbook uh digital um, digital sketchbook type thing is actually worth engaging in as a as an audience I've um, I'm not really good at talking while I'm drawing but I would like to be better so I'm doing this in order to get better if you if you hear my keyboard clacking, I'm sorry. It's I, I know it's loud. Um, and if you hear me make bad mouth noises, I'm also sorry about that. I know those are loud too. Um, <laughs> I, I I would like to be better at talking while I'm drawing, so I've decided to do the most reckless thing, which is to start a YouTube channel where I do just that. Um, I'm kind of unsure of what to talk about, uh, if anything, while I draw. I don't really know what I'm drawing right now. I guess I'm just doing a warm-up before drawing what I want to draw. Um, for this, I want to do speed paint type stuff, you know, s uh, speed art, uh, the time lapses of drawing, because uh, I, you know, I, I grew up, I, I grew up watching those, and I always had such a good time with them that I just... I don't know, I, I, I feel like that's what I would be at home making right now. So, I want to make them. But in order to make the speed draw, I have to record myself drawing. And it feels weird to record myself drawing if I'm not talking. And I want to get better while at, at talking while I'm drawing anyways. So, this happened. This is a really long time for me to be going on about this. Um, as I am only just now starting this, uh, there's going to be a lot of self-doubt, a lot of me wanting to, uh, back out of it, wanting to appeal to cringe and say, haha, look at me, I'm, I'm being weird and quirky on purpose. No, we, um... Doing new things is really weird and awkward at times, but I know that this is something that I want to do. Uh, not even because it's like necessarily uh, an important thing in the grand scheme of things, but because I uh, imagine I'll have a good time doing it. So might as well try. You know, if if you want to do it, try, right? Um, 
Anyways, hi. Um, I'm Natasha. I do art occasionally. <laughs> I'm currently listening to Brown Noise in order to hopefully keep the uh, other thoughts that I might have creeping in from creeping in. Maybe I want to draw how I'm feeling right now. Um, this is myself I'm drawing here, or trying to at least. This isn't how I usually end up drawing myself. But it's, it, it is myself that I'm trying to draw. I have a little bit of a bigger nose. I have a little bit of a this shaped nose. I don't always like drawing myself with that nose though. Maybe like that's more appropriate. That feels good. Yeah, that feels good. I feel a little nervous. Um, I'm putting myself out in the public light um, in a way that I don't usually do. I, 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 I've streamed before, and I stopped streaming because I felt uh, self-conscious doing it um, on top of the time commitment. But I, I really want to do these things, you know, streaming and videos. I want to make art, and uh, a part of that art is performance for me. So I want to perform. I want to. I want to make these videos where I create visual art whilst performing. Eyes are a little far apart. My eyes are pretty close together. Um, in person, you know, in real life. Oh. That's the center of the canvas I've just learned. Um, if you've decided to stay, thank you. Um, I've hope I, I hope I've done a good job of selling myself so far. Um, I don't mean to. I don't know, come off all uh, uh, business major, bro. <laughs> but you know that that is what I am doing, unfortunately, because of the nature of content creation. As much as I hate those words in that order, um, I am selling myself to you. I am trying to get your attention and make sure that you. Uh, stay for what it is that I'm doing here and continue watching because I want you to see what I make. I want you to see what I'm doing and I want you to I hopefully like it. Um, I'm really not a fan of like clean line work. I, I really enjoy these messy, sketchy lines. Um, and I don't do them very often because I feel like that's not what people really want to see in art. But I think I want to lean into it because uh, art is a lot like uh, personality, you know? Um, Art is a, an extension of you. Art is a uh, human. We are creative because we are human. It is our nature to be. If you don't think you're a creative person, that's a, a delusion, I guess. 
it's a lie that you've been telling yourself. Uh, I think it's because it's comforting. Because art is so homogenized, right? Is homogenized the right word? Is homogenized a word? Homogenized is a word. I don't know what it means. Um, I think it means grouped and into uh, grouped to a point where they kind of just become the same thing. Oh, you know what? This kind of looks like Snapcube. Um, I, I, now that I'm looking at it. Like, I'm looking at it right now and it kind of looks like Snapcube. Honestly, that's kind of cute. I think I'm going to keep it. I, th I think I'm going to lean into that energy. Um, this, uh, this thing that I'm talking about, um, not homogenized. Uh, I think it's a lot easier to consider yourself a non-creative person because, uh, creative skills, you know, visual arts, music, writing, poetry, uh, dance, singing, they all have become so, um, in intrinsically linked with, uh, skill. Like, you have to be a skilled person in order to be seen as someone that can actually do those things proficiently. That now a lot of people don't really want to do those things because it's embarrassing to not be skilled. It's embarrassing to not be, uh, it's embarrassing to sing along to, you know, take me to church when you can't even hit a note, right? Take me to church, I'll worship like a dog in the shiny light. Like, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound like Hozier, but... Hozier's own song, Sing, reminds me that we make art, we do art, like singing, for the sake of it. We do it to do it, not because we need to be good at it. Just because our, you know, white consumer culture requires us to be skilled doesn't mean we have to be. You don't have to listen to it. You don't have to admit or submit, sorry. Sometimes what you make can just be that. It can be something that you made. And that's what I'm hoping to do with this channel. You know, I'm hoping to create something. People don't have to watch it right now. That's okay. Honestly, if even one person finds enjoyment in this, I think I'll be happy with that. Let's see, let's twist and pull this a little bit. There we go. If even one person watches this and says, this is, this is what I wanted today, I will be happy. I hope you, I, I hope that you are that person. I hope that you right now watching this are having a good time. I 
think I'm gonna add some eye bags. I have some eye bags. This is a style I've never really drawn in before, I'm gonna be honest. This is kind of weird for me. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, that's a text box. I've never really um, put pen to paper per se and created something quite like this before. This is new. This is this is weird. Kind of exciting to be honest. Maybe this is just the nature of all YouTube artists that. We eventually create something that looks vaguely like this. <laughs> I I realize that this looks a little bit... This looks pretty similar to some stuff I've seen before. But that's alright. Because I'm creating something. And it's cute. I think this is cute. Yeah. I don't really have these curls underneath my ears anymore. But I did back in high school. A lot of people commented on those little curls specifically. I'd like to do something to bring them back. I'm just not sure what. I'm not very familiar with a lot of hair care techniques. Maybe I should ask some people in my life that are a little more familiar with that and see what they think. See if that's something that's worth looking into. See, yeah, no, this is cute. This is really cute. I really like the line quality on this. I really like leaning into the sketchiness. I don't get to do that very often. I really, really, really enjoy sketchy line work like this. It it brings me a lot of joy. So I'm going to continue doing that. Hmm. Add some flavor to the bangs here. There we go. With my soft voice and everything, I th it might come off that I'm like trying to do a uh, Oh my god, there's no way. There's no way I'm forgetting his name right now. No. Um... No, there's no way I'm forgetting his name right now. Oh, that's incredibly embarrassing. What's his name? Fuck me. Oh, no. Oh, no. I feel so bad. His name is Bob. I know it is. I know his name is Bob. I just, I don't know what else it is. I don't know what the last name is. Oh, God. I'm So, yeah. 20 minutes in. Um, welcome. My name is Natasha Markings. And I'm fucking stupid. What's his name? 
Oh my god. The painter, he did the he did the painting show and everyone loves him for very very good reason he's got a really relaxing voice and he says happy little accidents and it's very good um it's something i staunchly believe in something that um has rightfully stayed alive long past the end of his show and unfortunately his life See, no, because this is fucking adorable. You can't tell me this isn't so fucking cute. I really like this. Alright, let's let's give little me some clothes. Um Right, I had a thought that I was planning on finishing. Um I uh I've been kinda of speaking in this gentle voice and it might be coming off that like I'm trying to give that kind of vibe, trying to you know, copy his style or something. And while I don't believe that there's any, you know, like, copyright to that sort of thing, um, to, you know, one's presentation, I don't... This is kind of just my demeanor when I'm talking online. Um, it's only really amongst friends that I start to really get... Like, explosive and boisterous. <laughs> um, I don't feel the need to when I'm drawing, especially. I'd rather be a little more relaxed. I don't think I'm going to go with the hoodie. Hoodie doesn't feel me. I'm wearing a hoodie right now, but that's because I'm comfy. But I, I'm, I'm not comfy in this picture. No, oh, this this pose, this face, this isn't comfy. This is this is nerved. This is trying to present herself as something interesting, something that people should be engaged in and take interest in. So I'll draw an outfit that I would wear if I wanted someone to be interested in me. Maybe Maybe this is a first date outfit. What would I wear on a, on a first date? What would I wear on a first date where our date was, uh, where like the thing that we do on our date is uh, public speaking? What would I wear to that? I think what I would wear. Um, first of all. I don't think I'd wear a top. I think I'd go topless, tits out. <laughs> uh, no, I think what I would do, honestly, I'm turning away from the microphone because I want to, I'm looking at my closet now uh, with my finger on my chin. I think what I want to do, I think what I would wear, um, is one of my favorite shirts. I had a um, I had an old I had an old uh, shirt that I really didn't like because of the sleeves. So what I did was I cut them off and I made it into a cute little muscle tee. And I kind of went around the collar and the uh, sleeves and I embroidered some white over it um, kind of giving it this very simple sewed look kind of just going in dots like this right 
And I have a cute little embroidered cat right here. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna draw a circle there so I don't forget to draw it in. And get this sort of effect in there so I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's messy, you know. You know, this is kind of reminding me of an art style that my um, a, a friend from high school used to draw in. I wonder where she is now. I hope she's doing okay. It'd be a really big shame if she wasn't. Gotta get the boob line right, because if it's not right, then this entire picture is worthless, right? I have a hard time with curves like this sometimes because my wrist is the way it is and it's uh, very upsetting. It's kind of the arm is squeezing into it here so we're going to mimic that right there. It's going to move this circle over to the left a bit but that's okay. Give a sharp point and then bring it in here. bring the elbow down to tip there. Um, the forearm has this kind of curved shape where it uh, leans in a little bit but then rounds itself out again. I'm going to redo this. There we go. Now this shirt looks best because of how long it is tucked in. So it's going to be tucked into some pants that I've done a very similar thing for. I have some curves here because uh, you know, I'm bending over at this sort of line of action going through. A line of action, if you don't know, is a line that uh, goes through your entire drawing, kind of the subconscious line that we uh, see in the drawing, you know. Um, a perpendicular line like this to uh, opposite lines that complement each other, usually in a perpendicular fashion where one line uh, if it were to meet the other, you know, they would meet again at the top here, right? They would meet there. Um, something to look for when doing this kind of thing. Uh, this kind of thing being drawing. <laughs> um. God, fuck. Uh, I don't, I'm not as really assuming that, uh, what my audience is like right now. I don't really know anything about you guys right now. Um, I don't, I don't even know who's watching, if anyone. Probably no one, because of the nature of the internet, how vast it all is. There's a lot of stuff out there. 
Um, and I am but one of the many, 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 many things here. Welcome to my little corner. Welcome to the uh, part of the internet wherein I reside. I hope you like it. I made some tea. If you want some. I feel like the hand looks a little disproportionate, but I'm not entirely sure why. Because I think it's just these little bits I drew that are distracting me. I feel like that the fingers need to be a little thinner. Yeah, that feels fine. Let's see, left hand, so I don't really wear on any anything special on my left hand. I have a bit of a cuff that I like to have. Um, This is a shitty little cuff I made out of a denim jacket that I own. I didn't like the collar on that jacket, so I uh, cut it off. And I made a cuff out of it. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I really like how the cuff looks. So I wear it pretty often. Bring the arm down, and then we have a bit more here. The arm here is a little thicker than the other one, so I'm going to bring that in a little bit. There we go. Feels a little more right. Gonna add a few more lines here because I want to increase the line weight. This is the bottom of the arm, the bottom of the object, so I want to make the line weight there a little thicker so that it reads as being the bottom, uh, more shadowed part of the object. That's uh, my thinking going into it. See, I'm also thinking about shadows as I'm adding these little, uh, I guess like features, featurettes, uh, little details around the drawing, you know, these little bits here and there. I'm going to start with the thumb. In my mind, the thumb is the most important part of a hand. The thumb tells you where everything else in the hand is. Is that bullshit? I don't think so. It might be, but... I, don't know. I, I, I feel it's kind of true. 
it doesn't make sense to you, leave it. Everything I say should be taken at face value. <laughs> no, um, I say a lot of things as they come to my mind. They, sometimes they will make sense, other times they won't. And if they don't make sense, dismiss them. That's fine. make this hand a little smaller. Doesn't feel quite right. Yeah, that feels about right. So a fun little proportion step. Um, the reason it's called a forehead is because if you line up the fingers you know, so that they're all flat against one another. That is your forehead. Oh, that's the wrong button. There we go. Um, I like to make my hands a little bigger. That is a stylistic choice that I can make because I know how to draw hands. <laughs> Uh, I always recommend you learn to do something correctly before you stylize it um, because the fundamentals are important. I'm going to give myself some black nails here because I love me the look of black nails. They're just such slutty, slutty nails. Perfect. Uh, let's 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 give it some hand wave signs here. Not too much can't quite tell if it's too much. I never know if it's too much with these little wave uh, signifiers. Motion signifiers? Motion blur, I suppose. It's readable, which is what's important. Uh, I'm going to keep those in a separate layer because I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep them or not. Let's get to these pants. Let's see. Uh, get some belt loops in there. Nice and chunky. I really, really like me some chonky, chonky fabric. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be wearing a belt in this particular piece. So I'm going to keep that empty. Then pockets, which uh, usually connect to the first belt loop from the, the button. We're going to get those pants in. 
get them nice and folded, get them nice and scratchy in there. Lots of folds, lots of uh, crease marks. Yes, that's good. I want these to look just just baggy enough. Back pocket there. And then we get side stitching here. There we go. Yeah, that's that's wonderful there. Does it look at that sketch? Looks good. Uh, let's see. This arm feels a little big still. Oh. Put all the pants on the hand wave layer. Does this feel right? I think the sketchiness of these lines, it's not heavy enough. Doesn't quite feel like the bottom of this object. And yeah, this arm feels a little big. Even for how stylized I like to make my hands. Yeah, that feels good. I think I'm going to add uh, a bracelet or two on this arm, actually, on this hand. Move that just a smidge. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. That is perfect right there. Add some finger pads here. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead, gonna go ahead and mostly make all of this even even smaller or even smaller. -er -er -er. Keep the hand itself a little big. There we go, there we go. Oh. That's the canvas waving hi. Hi. Canvas. <laughs> uh, little dumb jokes aside, uh, dumb jokes. I'm reflecting. Uh, there we go. There we go. That feels good. That feels great. I think this isn't going deep enough. Yeah, I 
I think this is about ready for coloring. And I'm going to be very, very, very light with the color here. As in, like, it's going to be very sketchy. And that's okay. I don't intend for this to be a full finished piece here. Um, I'm going to get my skin tone in here. I'm not quite that red. I'm a little, a little more desaturated, a little paler than that. There we go. Uh, this brush that I'm using here is the Danis, Danica Sill Sketch Brush, which I un uh, unironically, I unironically like using it for the uh, color blocking, but uh, it is ironic because it's a sketch brush that I'm using for the coloring. Um, just having a big square that blocks in colors. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. My hair. We have a darker blue here. My hair isn't currently like a dark blue, but it is the uh, it is the color I like my hair as most. So maybe in the piece I in this little drawing here I actually go in and I have a bit of a fade. You know, have my natural hair color bleeding into it, you know, get that more, uh, desaturated brown kind of seeping into it. You can tell that the hair dye is beginning to fade off now. Yeah, that's, that's cute. I really like that. Going in here and blocking in all of this. Trying not to get lost in the drawing process itself and continue talking. Just just gotta keep talking. If you keep talking, nothing will go wrong. <laughs> if you keep talking, it'll all turn out fine. The video won't be a drag. It'll be cute. Um, this video specifically, I will say, um, I'm trying a format. Um, I guess me doing this in of itself is me trying a format because I haven't really done any format, uh, for my drawings. I don't, uh, I don't really make videos at all, at least not consistently. Um, but I'm trying a format that I haven't really, I don't really see many people do too often which is having uh, both the edited and the unedited version of a uh, of a speed draw, you know, of a, of a drawings time lapse. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in later and I'm gonna speed this all up. I'm gonna put it into a uh, software for video editing and the like. And then I'm going to talk over it. I'm going to give it commentary. And I'm thinking about what I want to talk about as I'm drawing it. But most of it's going to come to me right then and there. It's going to be unscripted. 
as most commentary for these kinds of videos usually are. But I also want this drawing itself to be a video. I want to have both. The long form for long form video, calmer, more drawn out, allowing silence to step in, allowing the drawing process to take over, letting the process be a process. Once I sit down and actually start working on the video itself, I'll... You know, I might be a little more excited. I might be talking about it all like it's some big thing. But right now, I'm chilling. I'm vibing. I'm having a good time. Because this right here... This is just... Relaxing. And I'm nervous. As the drawing shows. I'm going to go in and I'm going to... I'm actually not going to sketch out or uh, erase all of the uh, skin block being outside of the line work just outside of the bit here itself just outside of the base silhouette because I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint over all of that for the clothing so it doesn't need to be perfect but the silhouette here, I'd rather it be tighter to the colors. I feel like someone out there is going to listen to this and fall asleep. And honestly, perfect. That's good. I would rather um, people find my voice relaxing than not. I like to think I have a relaxing voice. Don't mess with my audio levels too much. Don't gain too much. I'm just chilling. Quiet, calm, level. There we go. That's cute. That's adorable. I actually want to use a very similar desaturated color for the shirt here. And you know what? I need to start naming my layers or I'm going to lose track of them very, very quickly. Hair. These are all the lines. waves. <laughs> I wonder how many people watching this, if any, have performed on a stage before. If, if you're watching this, I'd really appreciate it if you made it this far, too. Uh, if you could comment down below if you've ever performed on a stage before. Because I have a little bit of stage fright right now. Um, my chest is simmering. And I don't know what to talk about. I'm a little anxious. Will people like my voice? Will people find this interesting? Who would sit down and watch me drawing? Nah, no one. 
In all honesty, someone is probably keeping this on in the background while they do something else like play TF2 or maybe you're drawing yourself. I hope you're drawing. I like it. Um, I like knowing that I am encouraging or at least providing a good atmosphere for, some, for another artist to work and create their own thing. I'm going to make the stitching layer and put it at the very top there so I don't forget it. Pants. Pants are a little darker. A little bluer than purple, but darker. Um, I wear a lot of black, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, I don't know, sometimes I like to wear some bright colors. But I really like black. Black looks good on me. Black looks good on everyone, to be fair, but... You know, I... Sometimes I get a little self-conscious of my body shape, of my... Mm, silhouette, I guess. And black hides a lot of that. Black kind of just makes me a big shape. And I really do just like being a big shape. Big shape, very gender. Big shape is ideal existence. All right, now it's time to go in and add uh, little features. Um, actually, hold on real quick. I'm going to make these the, I'm going to make a separate layer for the cuffs. This is going to be pretty much the most color we're going to have in this piece here. Blue. There's a lot of blue going on here. I don't have a problem with that. I like blue. I'm going to use the same black as I have for the pants. Uh, I'm actually going to go a little more red though. So it's more of a warm gray. Yeah. Then other features, I can have this black be a button, which is perfect. I accidentally drew on the wrong layer. Who hasn't done that before? All right, features, we have a little button. Um, I want to go in and I want to give this a little bit of metal. So I'm going to go in with some blue for the metal here. Uh, I didn't think to add earrings. I want to add some earrings. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some, myself some earrings. Here we go. Yeah, I got some ear cuffs in there. There we go. Perfect. All right, yeah, and then again, under features, I'm just gonna go in with this blue here. Oh, and of course, features is under hair. So I've gotta erase some of that. Then once we have this blue, I'm gonna lock this layer. This is a tip for you artists. I'm gonna pitch this a little yellow. Here we go. And then lighten it, desaturate it. And then just a little splash, a little line there. 
And then I'm going to go the opposite direction, make it redder. And then darken it, still to keeping it to saturated. You zoom out, that looks a lot like metal there, doesn't it? Because that's what metal does. That's um, that's the way that light plays with metal. It, um, the metal material itself uh, reflects a lot of light. Um, but that light, very, very, uh, very much depends on what the metal material itself is the light that it reflects straight from the light source. Uh, so, you know, you have your, you have your bright white light source over here, and it's, it's bouncing off of this, and you're getting this. It's gonna, it's gonna shift, but it's gonna be less saturated. You're getting less color as it gets brighter. But then opposite of this, you have your you have your dark side, which isn't reflecting any color. This is nothing. And because of that, it's also going to be desaturated. You're not getting any color there because you're not getting any light. The same applies to most materials. Um, except for uh, stuff like fabric here which I'll actually show you what I do for fabric. Um, first of all, I don't like using any of my regular brushes for fabric. Um, I use the Keenan Lafferty K and KL brushes. And I go, I really like the skin transition to brush for fabric. What I do for, bra for fabric, it's actually saturate it a little bit and make it a little lighter. Um, I don't know why this looks good, but it I, I, I it looks really, really good to me. I don't know if that's how it actually works. I've never um, I've never actually uh, studied fabric itself uh, in that way specifically, but I don't know, it looks good to me, so I'm gonna continue doing that find it, get a little more saturated, a little brighter. Um, a material that does not follow this is latex, which just reflects um, the color of what is around it and the light source. Then I blend it, I make it very soft in order to show the fabric. You know, it's not super shiny, you know, so you're not gonna get all that light in there. You know, I erase most of it, but you want hints of it. You want a suggestion of it. And then for the shadow, I actually do the same thing. I make it darker and more saturated. Not by more, not by much, not not too saturated, but uh, I do do that. Shadows, I do really uh, like to keep though, which is why I dulled the light the light reflection, uh, lighter spots before I added the shadows in. Because while I want the transition to be soft, I don't... I want there to be less of a suggestion of it and more of a... it's there, you know? This fabric can get pretty dark.
There we go. Actually, I think I'm going to add just a little more of the darkness here. Just overlay it. There we go. Yeah, that feels good. That feels good. You know, as for the skin itself, I'm going to go in um, with a soft brush. I'm going to make it redder and darker. And I'm going to go in around the edges. Find those tight spots, but also just go around the edges. Then we're going to go in with that uh, chalk brush here, which has a little bit of texture to it. Um, and I'm going to start quote unquote erasing, but in my case, just drawing this back in. Kind of gives us some texture, but you get this really light look and starts looking like actual skin just a little bit. There's one thing, there's one more thing I like to do to skin, which I'll show right once I'm done with this. those ears some shadows. All right, now that we have all this, um, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to clip it to the skin. So anything I draw on it will it'll only show based on what the skin has, uh, the skin layer has on it. I'm going to make it multiply. I'm going to go in with the same brush here, opposite of the light source. You'll find those tight corners, find those edges. And again, going to erase just a bit, make sure there's some texture there. sure the eyes are getting some shadow here. Make sure the ears are getting some shadow here. The nose, the nose needs some shadow. The nose is deep. that's there. I'm going to clip it. I'm going to clip that layer. Make it warmer. Make it a lot brighter. A lot more saturated. I'm just going to go in around the edge here. G. 
just around the edge. And just give it a lot of that like bright red color just around the edge. This is called, uh, this is something you'll notice in real life. Uh, it's called subsurface scattering. Uh, basically what's happening is your skin is uh, partly tra uh, transparent, it's translucent, right? So some light gets reflected, but other light gets, it goes through the skin, it gets trapped. Um, you have your skin and light goes in and it bounces out, right? But some of it, some of it goes in and it doesn't come out. Instead, it bounces off another layer of your skin. So it goes actually a little past, you know, this point and this point. Instead, it bounces off this point here and actually ends up coming out right where the shadow begins. And it shows a lot of that very, very saturated skin color. And in someone of my skin tone, you know, white, you get this uh, nice uh, pinkish sort of hue. I'm actually going to go ahead and blur that a little bit. Not a ton, just a little bit. Still with the alpha lock on so it doesn't lose that texture that I painted out of it. But that looks a whole lot better. You know, that feels alive right there. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of shine as well. So find that, make it a little yellower. Brighten it up. Nope. Unless Photoshop doesn't want me to, of course. So sorry, my bad. Let's find all the places where light would hit. Raise it, make it a little more centralized. We don't want our skin looking oily or greasy. But, you know, there's going to be a little bit of light. Something I always like to add is uh, I'll copy this and then I'll uh, blur this one. Just spreads it out a little bit, and then I can I can make this a little less uh, opaque, bring down its opacity, and the brightness is still there. It's just a little more diffused now. Then under features, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna give my eyes some color now. Eyes not fully white. Eyes have a little bit of a blue. Uh, eyes are a little blue. The sclera. It's kind of just the way they are. This is the skin. Why am I on the skin? I want to be on features. Teeth, on the other hand, are a little orange, a little yellow. So the shadow for the eyes are going to be a little blue because they're a little blue. The teeth shadow, it's going to be gray, but it's going to be very desaturated, but it's going to be orange, you know.
actually gonna make this a little lighter here. My eyes are pretty green. Kind of this swampy green. I like to go in with a little bit of yellow for my eyes. Give it this bit down here and go in with a deeper Hello. There we go. Then go in with a deeper green at the top. Sort of a shadowy uh sort of a shadow. And then you gotta go in, you gotta give it the little light reflection. You gotta. And I don't have a ton, ton of freckles, I'll be honest. Um, uh, uh, I'm not being honest. Now I'm being honest. I have no freckles. However, I adore the way freckles look, and I often give myself just a, a few freckles in makeup. So I'm going to give myself some freckles in the art. Just a few here and there. I'm gonna select the skin. Select those pixels. Invert that. Then on the freckles, remove it so they're they're not on the not skinned areas. Then I'm gonna go into stitching with my little pencil here. And I'm going to go in with the stitching colors that I have. Right, like you tell me that's not fucking adorable. Because I adore that. Now I'm just going to draw it over here now. Um, uh, I should probably draw in the kibby here first. Reject reality. Is this is uh, some embroidery I put onto this shirt. Because, uh, because why? Because it goes hard. Simple as that. Now that I've drawn it over here, I'm going to select it. I'm going to warp it in. I have it conform to the shape of the shirt now. And select. There we go. There you go. Now it looks like it's actually like adhering to the laws of nature. Now down here, I have a similar thing going on with the stitching.
There we go. That's cute. You'll notice I have a bit of a theme going on here. That was for lighting hair. Um, hair actually follows the same laws as uh, metal does in terms of lighting. Uh, it gets lighter, it gets more desaturated. Uh, this is because our hair has, uh, it, it, it's because of our hair being made up of metal. Um, our hair has uh, skin cells in it, yes, but also amounts of copper and zinc. And uh, other uh, other metals uh, too. I'm sure. I'm sure. I think it depends on hair color. Like ginger people have more copper, I guess. All right, now let's tighten this. what I want to do for the background here. I want to have it be a little red, a little desaturated. Almost calling to the red of a uh, of a set of curtains that would be on a stage. Copy the waves and make them white. Let's reverse them. There you go. Now let's get like a dark desaturated blue here. And draw a very, very rough approximation of the silhouette that we have here. If I wanted to, I could uh, copy and paste the silhouette and get it exact, but I don't want to. I want it to look sketchy. I want it to look rough. I want the shadow to be uh, distinctly different, warped, as opposed to the actual drawing, which is sketchy, yes, but it's there. Get some black in there. Filter, Gaussian blur. Blur the hell out of that. Maybe not that much. I am also now uh, realizing that this is in fact on the same level, uh, on the same layer, which I did not intend. But that's fine, we can work with it. Here we go.
You get really scrapbook sketchy there. So uh, let's get our shape back. Blur it so it looks a little more shadow like. Again, blur. There we go. Perfect. Make the background itself darker, darker. Now over all of this, I'm going to make this into a group and I'm going to clip to the group. Since we're making this really uh, on the nose, let's let's lean into it. Let's get on the nose. a more saturated color here. Filter it, get that Gaussian blur in there. Erase where there wouldn't be any light. Maybe this looks bad. Maybe I don't like this. Do I actually like this is a question. Make sure that the light doesn't touch where the shadow is. Filter. I think I know why I don't like it. I think the lines, yeah. I don't like the lines being underneath the lights. I think that's why I didn't like it. Yeah, there we go. You know, while we're here, 
I think I'm going to do one more thing. I think I'm going to add a little bit of makeup. Claret, but not a ton. Just a little bit. There you go, just a little bit. Perfect. started losing myself a little bit towards the end of this here. I've been talking less and less as I've been getting more and more engaged in the piece, but that's part of why I'm doing this, you know. A little, I'm a little stage awkward. I don't, I'm not necessarily scared. Um, I just, I don't entirely know what to say, but I know I want to be on here. I know I want to be here. I don't think that's a bad thing, necessarily. I just feel a little bit um, off despite my inclination to keep going. And I just, I need to get past that offness. I need to get past that feeling. Add a little bit of color gradients in there to make it pop a bit. Make it a little more dramatic. And while I'm here, I actually do want to do one more thing. I know, but uh, I'm just, I'm such a slut for edge lighting. Let me show you what I do for edge lighting. So believe it or not, I go around um, the edge Uh, just where the lighting would be most, you know. Just kind of make sure that all of those uh, edges are found. As you go around your piece. I like to think of this as sort of um, a, a kind of affirmation for your art here. As though tracing uh, around the edges of it and confirming, like, affirming Every edge of this is beautiful. Every edge of this is here and exists. And it exists as such. It is beautiful. And we do that. All right, get to the edges here. I'm going to set that to color dodge. And I'm going to uh, copy it, put it underneath it. And I'm going to make it screen
Well, sorry if you heard a thump. Uh, I had to sneeze, and I didn't want you to hear it. I'm gonna go in, make it, uh, make it screen, and I'm gonna lock the opacity, fill it with yellow. I'm gonna blur it a bit. Uh, after unlocking the opacity. Once you give it that blur. Oh my, that's magical. That's gorgeous right there. Bob Ross! His name was fucking Bob Ross! <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I fucking hate it here. God. His name was fucking Bob Ross. <laughs> Anyways, I go through and I clean up those edges. Uh, make sure that the uh, uh, blurred yellow doesn't go into places that should be obscured by shadow. But that right there, that looks gorgeous. I kind of like going in with the uh, on the edge itself and polishing it up, tightening it a little bit. There you go, gorgeous. that you know I, I feel good about this for those of you that have actually sticked in with me throughout all of this today you have learned that uh, Bob Ross's name is Bob Ross you've also learned that uh, you can edge your lighting to make it look to make your art look gorgeous It'll work every single time, I promise. Um, I, I want every single person out there that's watching this to draw something today. Or if you don't draw, write. If you don't write, sing. If you don't sing, play something. I want you to make something today. Just something, anything. And I want you to have a good time with that, no matter how it turns out. Find beauty in that which you don't like. You might be a little stage awkward, but at least you're up on the stage, right? I love you all, and have a good night. <laughs>